And it is now time for Doc Talk on 92.1 WROI Giant FM, streaming online at WROIFM.com, RTC Channel 5, and soon to have video and audio on RTC TV 4. And I am joined in studio by Dr. Eric Seward. Good morning. Good morning. How are we doing today? I'm doing wonderful. It's uh, another sunny mo- Monday morning in yeah. beautiful Rochester, Indiana. Yes, it is. <laughs> So today I wanted to talk a little bit about information, and this is something that um, that sounds very generic, but w- what I'm specifically wanting to talk about is sort of how we, how we consume medical information and use it. Um, and I think that this is just a very interesting topic. I sometimes think back to the Civil War when, um, imagine the... The South is trying to, uh, the Confederacy is trying to get British support. And the Union is desperately trying to stop that from happening. And they are writing letters to the king or prime minister or whomever, the, the, even their own diplomats. Right. Um, and those letters are getting put on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> and they're getting they're getting boated over, and you know the 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 soonest you could expect a response would be two three weeks later. Yeah. Um, and then I think about how our information rolls today, and how if something uh, even slightly insignificant happens in you know the middle of China, we know about it in ten minutes. You know you can't you oh. can't. Uh, in fact, I don't think the public now could could ever go back to consuming information even the way that that we did um, right. as kids. And I, I, I think back to 70s, 80s, 90s um, information when there was breaking news. You know, you, there used to be sort of a consolidation of all the day's events into a half an hour segment three times a day. Yeah. And that's how, you know, I mean, I, I imagine my parents and, and grandparents sitting around the TV watching the news, seeing what's happening and, and, and everything that was worth knowing. And we could argue that maybe that's still true. <laughs> could be consolidated into a half an hour segment yeah. um, that you could you could consume, you know, once or twice or three times a day if you were if you were an overachiever. And now, again, you know, we, we couldn't imagine even going back to that format. You know, you have to to yeah. have multiple news outlets in order to interpret the news, <laughs> and it's uh, it's just it's it's interesting to me that how how those things have evolved. Well, the same thing's true with medicine. Um, I would argue that as a child or in my young years, the majority of of people got their medical information either from magazines or possibly from books at home. Um, they there were some radio programs. Um, uh, maybe there still are, but but things like this where people would speak about um, medicine, and this was how how medical information was consumed. And you could imagine that's very non-specific for somebody that has a very specific problem. Right. Um, you might go to the library and look up. You might be able to get slightly more specific, albeit outdated information that way. And nowadays, um, almost everybody that I know of, um, when they have a bump on their elbow or when they find out that they're pregnant or when they get uh, some wild diagnosis, um, be it you know something like endometriosis or a sprained ankle or cancer, go straight to the Internet. In yeah. fact, nowadays, you don't even need to go to the Internet because it's usually in your pocket. Right. And so the um, information is vast. And it's out there. And um, all of us doctors will tell funny stories about patients who either drove us crazy or, or in some cases were very helpful by walking in with their their reams of paper they had downloaded off of the internet. That was a few years back. Now they come in and they show you on their phone exactly, you know, what, what it says on whatever source that they're getting. And, yeah. and that's... It, the world has just evolved. It yeah. has evolved. And this is something that we deal with every day. I would say that, from my perspective as a doctor, it's good to be educated. And we, I want my patients to come in with a, a basic understanding of whatever their needs are so that we can get more to the heart of the matter when we can. Um, the problem, of course, is the Internet is the Internet. Yeah. And it is a vast amount of good information uh, combined with a vast amount of bad information. Now, it might 
interest people out there to know that we doctors, this guy uh, in particular, I'll speak for myself, go to the internet all the time for stuff. <laughs> we do. <laughs> um, and, it, and it really, it's it, a lot of the time, it's maybe it's for my own personal use. Um, but a lot of the time, you know, it may even be, I would say once a week, something walks into my office, some weird situation or interesting um, medicine or or something that I either am unfamiliar with or it's just, you know, such a rare thing that it comes up every 10 years or five years that we have to, you know, kind of go back and bone up on it. And sure, the first place that I might go to would be the internet. A few years back, um, it would have been one of the big books. I would have gone to my Harrison's Internal Medicine book or my Williams Obstetrics book and would have looked up. But, you know, the problem with that sort of information is that that information is very specific and very good and very medical and pertinent, but also sometimes five or ten years out of date. Right. Um, by the time a, a thing is printed into a massive book, kind of like encyclopedia information, it's, it's fairly old information at that point. Whereas every day, every month, every year, um, I, I was at a conference where one of the um, the presenters made this comment that there are something like 5,000 new articles. And I, I can't remember if it was every quarter or every, every six months that came out just in obstetrics and gynecology. And so if you had, if you had a whole team of medical reviewers, I, I remember that the number came out that you would have to read something like 40 articles a day to keep up. Oh, and, wow. and and no no physician can do that. Right. No no practicing working living no. physician can do that. If your job was was purely to do nothing but read and review articles, you probably still couldn't keep up. It would take a team and and sort of disseminating that just with one topic uh, to to you know broaden that to all of medicine would be. I have no idea what those numbers would be, but they would be insane. Yeah. So, so that information, you know, is there for us to go find, and um, and it's it, a lot of times it's there in the same sources uh, that that people would uh, look up at home. Um, I think that that it's fantastic to use the internet, but I think the difference between the doctor looking at the internet and maybe the patient looking at the internet is that we kind of know what we're looking for, right? And we know how to be critical of what's being said, and we know how to how to sort of pick out the bits of information that are sort of simple and honest fact versus the things that are maybe a little convoluting. And I think a lot of times when you're the patient, you don't necessarily see the difference between what might be real and not real or what might be relevant and not relevant. Um, a few years back, I had my daughter had a stress fracture in her uh, femur. And I <clears throat> was not terribly familiar with femur stress fractures. So I got online and I, I went to, uh, looked up every every little bit of information I could find on uh, uh, femoral stress fractures. And um, I found some good information. I found some specific information. And I also found a whole lot of chat rooms of people telling horror stories about how they could never walk again and things like that. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, if you read a couple of those, you would come in panicking to your doctor and yeah I, and i i think that um and we get this all the time uh we get folks that come in and and you know they they knew somebody or they heard about this case or you know they read on the line that yeah that that this could happen and sometimes you know those things truly could happen in the weirdest of weirdest circumstances but realistically you know you got to kind of look at that information um i find that when you get online, if you if you use sort of well-known, reputable sources, and and by that I mean if if somebody were to go to WebMD, or if somebody were to go to like a Mayo Clinic site or Livestrong, all of these have reasonably good medical information. I find that for the most part, it's dumbed down to its very basics, um, but that's usually reasonably good information. And it's a good place to start if you want a generic overview of whatever that issue may be. And between those three sites, and there are others, I'm not, I'm not 
I couldn't possibly make a comprehensive list of all the reasonable sites. Um, even with those, a lot of times you will you will be led to links to this medicine or this, you know, and a lot of times those are situations where they're trying to sell you something or they're trying to um, guide you towards whatever service or site that they want to guide you towards. And right. So you have to be a little careful when, when you're looking at links and connections within those websites, but they're yet generally pretty good information. Um, again, I would stay away from chat rooms and and anything that sort of reeks of opinions, yeah. um, because those those are just going to scare people. They aren't necessarily going to be helpful. Um, there are some very specific sites, sometimes like the American Cancer Society, or um, in my case, the um, American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, have um, information links. And those are always going to be very good and very specific. Um, we, a lot of times, will have links or will have that information available through hospital systems. Um, w- Several years ago, and this is, again, medicine is constantly evolving, but for the last, I would say, 30 years, um, there has been this this evolution of, and I would argue that it's been sort of an evolution on two fronts. One, on cost containment, which is sort of what all of um, the Obamacare stuff is all about. We talked a little bit about that last week, yeah. well, last month. Yeah. Um, and, um, and, some of it has to do with patient safety. Um, so there's been a, a, a big drive towards making sure that people are communicating, that all of the information is obvious, that nobody's getting the wrong leg amputated, things like that. Um, what's interesting, and, and doctors everywhere grumble about this, is that it seems as though through all of this evolution of medicine, all of our lives have gotten harder and we don't necessarily see the, um, the the positive, you know. We don't. There's. It's not convincing and overwhelming that we've improved the delivery or quality or cost containment of, of medicine. All these like overarching goals, but we have created a brand new uh, uh, department in every hospital around the country called informatics, <laughs> and it's basically mm-hmm. the computer wing of the hospital. It's the uh, the part of the hospital that that's involved with the um, the electronic medical records and the communications. And those things have, have just gone haywire in the last, uh, to the point now where uh, a paper chart is, is like a dinosaur bone. Yeah. Um, it just, you know, 10 years ago it was still happening, but, but they've gone extinct. And now you <laughs> come in with a tablet or yeah, there's tablets, use the there's computer computers. that's in room. It's exactly right. And there are teams and teams of people that are behind each one of those tablets. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's the one place where the, you know, I think medicine has, has expanded dramatically. Um, you know, we, we could argue the merits or, or, or dismerits or, or demerits, I guess, of that. But you, you could say that that. Um, that certainly is a change, is a is a seismic shift in how we do things. One of the places where this is um, a direct benefit for patients, however, is with this communication piece. Uh, back when Obamacare originally came out and there was a, a mandate towards um, electronic medical record systems, part of the way we were judged on that was by how we disseminated information. The goal of uh, the electronic medical record was to get information out to uh, to patients. And, and it was also to communicate doctor to doctor and, and to right. have sort of a consolidated, um, reasonable and comprehensive record that everybody could turn to. Um, that, that communication piece with patients uh, has has evolved over the years and it every hospital around the country every doctor's office around the country uh, now has some version of what we sometimes call a patient portal so that um, you know if you go see a doctor if you go into the hospital and have an x-ray or if you're in the hospital and you have tests done while you're in the hospital you can go on to uh, some sign-in process and this is true at every every hospital and you can get your information yep so and we call that a patient portal i think that the most hospitals do um some degree you can usually sign up for it at your doctor's office um or 
through the hospital that you have dealt with and you can you can then have access to this information a lot of of the patient portals will also have access then to um, more specific patient information usually from very reputable sources either medical system sources that the hospital uses um, or from the american college of pick your thing rheumatology uh, obstetrics and gynecology surgery pediatrics um, and and that's going to be good information it's also the same sort of information that if we were to print off something in the office or to hand out a brochure uh, in the office most of the time those those are specific things that we're either getting from whichever source in my case it's usually the ACOG American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology but uh, depending on your department depending on the specialty it's going to be specific to that there are are some other generic things that we sometimes get through whatever our hospital system is and these are bits of information that we can hand out there's also some uh, advertising information that that gets handed out for instance if somebody comes in and they want to have a marina iud we're going to hand them the marina iud pamphlet well that's produced by the marina iud people <laughs> yeah. so they they are um they're going to be giving you uh, basically the 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 information on the thing and and whatever their disclaimer is very much like the ad on tv for pick your medicine you know with the this will help with this this and this and then the 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 30 seconds of all the the ways that you cause you (laughs) you could die or break out in a rash and um so you know that that said there's a, a little bit of that sort of information but generally that's been filtered through the doctor you know so ultimately we feel like hey this is good enough information that we're willing to risk the the bit of advertising that is involved in it right and of course all through the ages and this has never been more true than now we feel like sometimes the best information is direct you know so if i can get somebody into my office and i can sit down and talk to them i frequently have people come back just to go over test results um or to talk about you know, something that we did if we did a biopsy or something a week or two before or ordered an x-ray. Um, if I really feel that there's going to be information that that might might warrant a, a more of an in-depth discussion, something that's not going to be super simple, I have people come back so we can sit down and have that discussion, that face-to-face interaction and back and forth. And make sure that that person walks out of the office with the information that they need to deal with whatever that issue is or or to interpret that test or that study or whatever it might have been right because you know those results may end up on the patient portal but i may open up that patient portal and go well this says all this but i don't know what that means so it's always nice to have a doctor say well this is what that means i i try um it no it's it it doesn't always get done but um a lot of times we have people that get generic blood tests and right. they will come in with you know a comprehensive uh, metabolic profile or a cbc or some some other just sort of big test that's got you know 30 different readings on it uh, that they had ordered from their insurance company or from uh from you know their primary care doctor or nurse practitioner or somebody and they come in and up this pops and i usually sit down and kind of walk through and say hey look this is this is what this means this is what this means you know and just sort of generically walk them through it so that they understand um these were all normal this one's a little bit off you know maybe you should eat more folate you know things like that or <laughs> yeah. more iron or whatever it might have been um but that and that that stuff doesn't always fall within the purview of what i'm doing but i i, I think it's important when you get this information it's important to get the information but it's also important to be able to interpret that information it does you no good i mean if i have a, a beautiful copy of of you know greek plays um lovely copy you know you know worth thousands of dollars but i can't read greek you know it doesn't do me much good and so the uh, medicine's a little bit of greek sometimes yeah. um <laughs> we try real hard to to communicate and and i think that you know uh, over the years between both sort of patient sensitivity and cultural sensitivity we've tried really hard to hone our communications to make sure that people walk out understanding but i've had conversations where i thought boy that was crystal clear and then the next question came at me 
to very quickly make me understand that it was not crystal clear to them. <laughs> right. <laughs> and all of a sudden, it's like, well, okay, rewind. Let's do this again and maybe a different tone. Um, I have a funny, funny story, and maybe finish on this one, um, where I was coaching um, a bunch of soccer kids, and they were, gosh, I think they were all first and maybe second graders. So... They were they weren't the entry level soccer, but like the next level. Of, right. It's like U eight, I think, and um, and I had bought one of those clipboards with the you know I could draw the plays on it, um, and um, I I I drew a play and I said Tommy, I want you to go be my right forward, and um, Sophie, I want you to be my left midfielder, and and Chris, I want you to be my right defender, and okay, everybody go, and they all went the wrong direction. And I thought, well, maybe they don't understand the concept. I mean, you know, maybe it's just a little bit too complicated. So I walked out to the middle of the field, and I put the clipboard down on the middle of the field. And I'm like, everybody understand that this represents that goal. This represents that goal. Got it? Everybody's like, yeah, 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 I got it. Okay, go to your positions. They all went to the wrong positions again. And and I, I just was scratching my head like, well, how could I be more clear than that, you know? <laughs> and uh, come back, everybody. Okay, everybody, put up your left hand. And about half of them put up their right hand. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Let's start with the bases. And, and that soccer team was not all that good at soccer by the end of that season. But by God, they knew their right from their left. <laughs> hey, <laughs> we made that, that a helps. point every single practice. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's sometimes there's a little bit of that, though, when, when we practice medicine. And I, I, you know, the goal in the end really is to give people good medical care, but to make sure that they understand why we're doing what we're doing, what the potential risks and benefits and, and consequences of, of choosing this or that might be, and ultimately um, trying to administer that information to them in, in a meaningful way that they can walk away and say, okay, now I know what's happening and, and, and why it's being suggested that we do this or that. And that's, that's the, the goal, you know, ultimately the goal of, of my job is to sort of disseminate information. Um, and I think with, in the world of the internet, in the world of, of mass information and split second information, um, it's amazing. You know, I wouldn't want to go back myself. I like the fact that in my hip pocket, I can I can look up almost anything at any time. We never have a long-lasting uh, road trip arguments anymore. If somebody doesn't <laughs> believe that the lyrics of a song are this or that, or or they think um, you know somebody was uh, was born in 1963, but they were born in 1953, we figure it out right now. Unless yeah. there's a dead spot in the you know? <laughs> yeah, then that's up for a little bit of a debate while you work your way through that five ten yeah. minute dead spot. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Dr. Seward, thank you very much for coming in. And uh, something that I wanted to say is, you know, don't necessarily self-diagnose with those web apps because just because uh, you're having a lot of symptoms of something that's more severe than what you actually are having doesn't mean that you're actually having that. The the internet is, um, it's it's like kindling for the hypochondriac. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it yes, is, it yes. is a fun way to make yourself sick. <laughs> it is, it is, because there are a lot of times you'll get on there and it'll say, oh, well, you have some death-defying disease that's going to kill you in six months and then you're freaking out and you go to the doctor and like no you have the common cold yeah it might be a cold <laughs> or it might be cancer yeah, <laughs> you, you never know sudden. you never know yeah, especially with the internet ways. i've had people that come in like ah oh, you know it's just a bump i rub some dirt on it and no that's not a bump <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah all right well but, Look well, forward to talking to you again next month. We'll be back next month. All right. All right. Thank you very much. This has been Doc Talk on WROI. Yeah.